Welcome to another video for STAT 420. In this video, we're going to talk about modeling and specifically look at linear, linear modeling as one example. Um, so let's start with some context here. Um, let's say that we're looking at the relationship between two numeric variables. So in this case, um, one numeric variable is the speed of a car, and um, the other variable here is the stopping distance in feet for that car. And so one thing that we might notice when we look at this data is that there's some kind of relationship between these two variables. In other words, um, the fact that I would know the speed of a particular car um, would tell me something about the stopping distance for that car given that speed. In other words, speed is not independent. It, um, there definitely seems to be some kind of relationship here. So maybe we'd like to try to model that relationship by looking at the data we have, what might be the relationship between these two variables. Um, so we can do that by defining a model equation. So um, just kind of starting off here, each data point can be identified by two values, um, the x value and the y value, where x is going to be um, the variable representing our predictor variable typically. Predictor, sometimes you might hear it called an explanatory variable and y is typically going to represent our response or outcome variable. Um, so maybe there might be cases where I don't really care about which one I'm predicting, I'm just looking at the relationship, but oftentimes um, I might have one that I care about predicting based on information from the other. So every data point can be identified on the scatter plot, plot based on these two values, and so i represents um, one to as many data points I have, up to n data points, so each point kind of has a, a specific label or coordinate. And I can model the relationship between x and y by using some kind of equation. So, so if y is my response variable, then y is going to be some function of x. So given some value of x, I can make a prediction for what y um, might be. Um, and that epsilon there, by the way, so this is the Greek letter epsilon, this is representing the error that I might have in my prediction. So as you might notice, um, this is not um, pre-algebra or algebra where I have some kind of perfect relationship that I can model between these two variables. Instead, I have a slightly messy relationship where like, I, I think there might be something there, but obviously the relationship, whatever that equation is, is not a perfect relationship, that there's still going to be some other things that affect stopping distance besides speed. So, so there is going to be some function of x here plus some level of error in the prediction that's going to equal y here. All right, so one candidate for this function is just a constant. So f of x just equals c. So in other words, f of x is some function that actually doesn't involve x. x is irrelevant, so it would just be some constant. Um, and this would be the case if there was no relationship between x and y. Right, so in this case, the constant chosen appears to be somewhere around like maybe 42, 43, um, saying that the stopping distance of a car is always about the same value, give or take some value, um, and is not dependent on x. However, we can kind of see right now that that doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, we seem to notice that um, as x increases, the stopping distance is also increasing. So, so maybe we should try a different type of model here. Um, but then the other uh, extreme or the other concern is that we could try to overfit the model by doing something a lot more complicated than necessary. So if I was trying to actually hit all the data points or kind of hit every nuance um, and bump that I see in the data, I would overfit and end up with some model that's not very useful at all. Um, so this is f of x equals something much, much too complicated where I have um, parabolic, but, but even more than parabolic, so you know maybe like x to the 15th or 20th power at this point. So that's probably not a very helpful equation either. Um, this might be a case, though, where a linear model would work well. Um, it's not, a linear model is not always going to be the answer, um, but a linear model is a good option for a lot of different um, variable relationships. So I can draw a line here, and I can see that as speed increases, stopping distance seems to be increasing by about this slope. Um, again, there's going to be some error. There's going to be some epsilon for a lot of these points, meaning that, that speed is not the only thing um, involved in this um, stopping distance explanation. But speed definitely seems to have some kind of 
noticeable relationship there that we can model. So a simple linear regression model is going to look like this, where I have y equals, um, and then I'm going to have um, some term times x. So this beta 1 is going to be like my slope coefficient. And there's also going to be an intercept term. The intercept could be 0, but most of the time, it, or I don't know if I should say most of the time, but many times it won't be 0, meaning that um, when, when um, x is 0, this would be my best prediction for y. Um, so, so an intercept term you might think of as kind of an anchor, where wherever I kind of, my slope tells me how steep the line is, but the intercept is telling me where I'm kind of anchoring it to the y-axis. It's where it's going to kind of cross through the y-axis. Um, so then I can model um, the position of any y-point, of any point in the um, response using this equation plus some epsilon, some matter of error, where that error is going to follow a normal distribution, mean zero, and variance, we'll just call it sigma squared. So one of the um, assumptions that we'll talk about in just a second is that um, the um, linear regression model has a constant variance across the range, meaning that um, if I'm assuming um, this is truly a linear relationship, then um, there's going to be some error, and that error should be equal. It should have the same amount of variance over here as it does over here. There's going to be some cases where maybe that's not true, or maybe it's a little bit uncertain, but that is one of the assumptions that the model makes if we're going to take it truly to, to what it represents, is that there, there exists an error, and that error is constant across the entire x range, and we can kind of label that error right here. All right, so y sub i is going to have a conditional distribution um, at any given x point. Um, so in other words, um, given that x equals, say, this value right here, then there is going to be a distribution of possible y values that I could see. And based on the assumption we just talked about, we're assuming that the distribution of y values is going to be normally distributed at that particular coordinate. Um, so it's going to be normally distributed at this position, so the position of, of the function that we talked about with the variance of sigma squared. Um, again, we can do that at any given x point, so at um, x equals x sub 3, um, y is going to be distributed normally at that point in the equation, so plugging in x sub 3 into my regression equation would be where it's centered, right here on the line, and sigma squared again would represent the variance at that given point. So we can kind of think about y as having a conditional distribution at any given x value, um, normally distributed with the mean of the point on the line, variance being some constant value that we could use at any given point here. All right, so I mentioned assumptions a minute ago, but I'll go ahead and go through them um, systematically here. Um, so the book um, defines the assumptions into four different um, kind of check, uh, what's the word, I'm, uh, not a checklist, the checklist would be the whole thing, um, check boxes, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, different people might kind of organize these assumptions a little bit differently, they might combine them a little bit differently, but this is the way that we'll organize them for this class. The first is um, that the relationship we're modeling really makes sense as a linear relationship. In other words, we shouldn't be fitting a linear model unless the scatter plot shows that that makes sense. So um, as an example, I could have a relationship that looks something like this, where it's really some kind of parabolic relationship that I'm looking at. But I could fit a linear model, right? So I could fit a line through this data, and I would be confident that this is better than nothing, that this is better than just you know y equals constant. Um, but I can also look at the scatter plot and see this is kind of a bad fit. So just because I could do this doesn't mean that I should do this. I should do the, the type of function that makes most sense for this data. So the first assumption we make is um, we should only fit a linear uh, model if it actually makes sense from the scatter plot that this seems to be a linear relationship. All right. Second, um, the errors of our linear model should be independent of one another. 
which this one's I think is kind of the trickier one to understand, but I'll give you kind of an example with like time related data. So if the x axis is time and I'm looking at something where the where the y value depends on the value that it was in the last point. So like the stock market would be a good example. Um, that would be um, dependent data, most likely, meaning that uh, my y values are depending on the value that comes before, and that it's really not kind of a random uh, distribution at any given x value, but there is some kind of linked pattern going on, and I should look at something like a time series model in that case. So a linear regression model should really only be used when we believe the errors are independent and that, um, you know, it, that there isn't going to be some kind of linking relationship um, going on between my values throughout the X spectrum. Okay, the third relationship would be that the errors are distributed normally at any given X value. So that was what we talked about um, back here, that we're assuming that the, the mean distribution of Y at any given X value is going to be centered at some point around the line, and it's going to be distributed normally around it. Um, so again, that's just an assumption that the linear model that we talked about would assume is going to be true. And then the fourth we also mentioned is that we're assuming an equal variance in y at any given point in this conditional distribution. That um, sigma squared is the same here as it is over here. So at, uh, a very classic example or a very classic term you'll hear is um, a cone shape would be a bad um, Bad's the right word. It would be a, it would be a red flag to doing a typical linear relationship. So, so if I had something that some data look kind of look like this, where the variance is clearly getting larger and larger as my x value gets larger and larger, um, this would be a problem. This would not be equal variance. So, so two terms you might hear are homoscedastic and heteroscedastic. So equal variance would mean homoscedastic. Sometimes you see it spelled with a C, sometimes with a K. One might be the British spelling. I'm not entirely sure, honestly. This over here would be heteroscedastic. Heteroscedastic. And so to fit a linear model, we're assuming homoscedastic. If our data is heteroscedastic, um, then we would need to do a transformation or something like that. So we'll see that later in the course. Um, is um, what we do when our data is heteroscedastic.